one man, tossed eternally into the wilderness, where he must forge all his weapons and armour using resources from only this area, taking on some of RuneScape's most feared monsters. All this was being able to be attacked by any other player at all times. But who would take on such an adventure through these treacherous lands? I present to you, Wildernator. Previously, on the Wilderness Only Iron Man series, we went to Scorpia to see if we could get any of her shards or any of her useful drops, but as we went to click out the cave, we did unfortunately skull. The peak air carried on attacking us, and this led to us losing our very beloved Dagon High Robe Top. We then tried our chances at the new Wilderness Slayer Caves that Jagex had recently implemented. We grabbed ourselves some Laren's Keys. Following this, we went to Scorpia to see what loot we might be able to get from her. We got attacked a few times, but managed to get away. We then tried our chances up at the Revenant Caves to see if we could land ourselves anything nice from there. We did unfortunately perish to the hands of this Pika. Hello guys and welcome back and welcome to episode 23 of the Wilderness Only Iron Man series. I'm pretty much done with leagues for the time being now. Um, I had a real blast playing leagues. I think Jagex did a really cool job of it. But it's time to come back to the main game and time to carry on progressing on Wildernator. What have I been doing whilst leagues have been on on Wildernator? Well, actually not a lot at all. I've got myself some smithing levels and although it doesn't look that much, I think I got from like level 63 to 68 or something and it's incredibly slow up at the Wilderness Resource Centre. I think whilst playing leagues i was averaging about 10k an hour so i was putting in a little bit of a smithing grind and we are edging towards that 73 we need for the bolts which we will continue to do going forward but for now we're going to be working on some wilderness slayer and we've got ourselves an ice giants task oh i didn't realize we were quite so close but we are kicking things off with level 73 slayer Ice Warriors task all finished up, we are now grabbing ourselves 124 Greater Demons, we're going to leave that one just for a minute, because as always we are out of power, <laughs> power amulets, it's like a constant thing to go back to the crazed archaeologist, but whilst we still need one of the malediction, uh, one of the shards, it's the Odium shard we need, it's not too bad going back there and the Red Dehyde bodies are always nice, so we're going to go do a bit of that and grab ourselves a few amulets of power. Animal. Absolute wilderness animal. First amulet of p -p -p power. Always a drop we absolutely love to see. A red dehyde body. Hey, and we get ourselves another fedora coming in. That's another spare red dehyde body, which means we can obviously take full restores to Venonatus, which is very, very helpful. Very successful trip up at the Crazed Archaeologist there. We got ourselves an added fedora, which is bonus fashion point scapes. We also got the three amulets of power, which is what we're after, and a couple of surplus red dehyde bodies, which I will never complain about. Also, actually, up to nearly 400 kills in the Crazed Archaeologist, so that is firing up there. We come up to do our Greater Demons task, and we're picking up a Laranial Key with still 88 left on the task. Laron Key, number 2, coming in for the task. Greater Demon task finished up, 32k coins. We've also got some goodies in the looting bag, and two Laran's Keys, which is always nice. We've now got a Zombies task, so we'll go do that one nice and quickly, and that's a nice easy melee one. Really nice quick one with the zombies, nice easy points. Next assignment's going to be 95 Earth Warriors. We finished the Earth Warriors task and we also got a Magic Axe task, which we finished as well. No Laurent's keys from either of those. But something that I wanted to explain that is interesting, when Hellhounds were in the Revenant Caves before they got moved to this Slayer Cave, um, they weren't able to be safe spotted. But they are in here, which is really nice because I get the increased chance at the Laren's Keys. And also it means that I can safe spot them somewhere else than very, very deep wilderness in level 55. We didn't get any Laren's Keys. But what we can do to explore ourselves is an abandoned hut with some magic axes. Oh my god, boys. As you can see, I just received an ancient effigy 8 mil. Uh, where is my ancient effigy, you might ask? Um, I picked it up, I pulled my recorder up, I dropped it as I was pulling my recorder up to um, just to show you boys that I got it as a drop rather than having it in my inventory. And some little prick comes along and picks it up. I just forgot that it instantly appears on the ground. I am so upset, I'm so angry that 8 mil would have helped the account so much. Oh boys, that is absolutely gutting. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a it's a one in seven thousand drop rate from these guys, so I'm not expecting one anytime soon. <laughs> oh, oh boys, it's just sunk in. I'm actually devastated. I'm an idiot. You can see I've got the drop there. I'm such an idiot. 
<laughs> Why did I do that? Why didn't I stab it in my inventory? It just looks cool on the ground, had all the text, it was just... Fuck. Bollocks. Anyway, boys, moving on. What can we do about it? We had an absolutely insane trip up there. We got over a mil in the looting bag. We got loads of bracelets of Ethereum if ever uh, lucky enough to get a weapon, which I won't be dropping on the floor. I will never, ever, ever do that again. Um, yeah, lesson learned at the cost of 8 mil. That could buy so many runes on Wildenator, but we cannot dwell on it. Shit. <laughs> Ah, a Dagon High Robe gone last episode, um, and 8 million effigy gone this episode. I've got 9 Laren's keys, I'm going to try my luck and just pray again that we, we, we maybe get a piece of Dagon High to cheer me up a little bit, because uh, yeah, that's a bit of a ball ache boys. Um, so, so let's use these 9 keys and see if we can get some Dagon High. Come on, shine down on us. You should be a green stack. You should be a green stack right now. In terms of actual value, that's an actually huge haul. I got the max amount of some expensive seeds there. Um, so on a normal account, that would be really useful, but I can't actually use those. However, let's think of the positives. <laughs> uh, we've got a nice amount of Smith and XP in the steel bars. The rubies are always going to be very nice. We've got some food should we need it in the future. And coal is also going to be nice for smithing, as well as 265k. So really, we're only 7.8 mil down. So it's not too bad. Well, life uh... And we have finished up another Hellhounds task, and that is another Laraniel Keyless task. Right then, Crystalia, what is our next task going to be? It's going to be 124 Ice Warriors. We were running fairly low on supplies, so I tend to do just sort of like an hour here and there of Last Man Standing, and obviously the points all add up. So with the ones that we had in our bank, we've now got over a thousand Blighted Manta Rays and over 300 Super Restores, so that should last us a little while. Ice Warriors finished up with, we've now got a task of 81 Revenants, so let's see if we can get a little bit lucky up there again. Two Magic Seeds, it's a pretty rare one, it one in one in one in 1800, it's absolutely no use to us, but it's always nice to see those rare ones. Okay, so as you can see, whilst we're up at Revenant Caves, we have someone absolutely stacked on us, and these are always very interesting tank tests, because you just never know if you're going to get away, you really shouldn't. I mean, look at the gear and level difference. Had I taken a bit more notice of the level difference, I'd have realised I only had to run south four levels, but I wasn't really thinking about that, I was thinking about survival. I had no choice but to camp that protects melee really because he looked like someone that I've had an AGS or claws and either of those were well, was one hitable let's face it with the damage output that he's getting he's also got a tibia as I say I should have just run south but I didn't I tried to exit the cave but does Wildenator live or die let's see Man, that was a close one. As you can see, he goes to uh, refreeze me, but as he clicks me, the combat level difference is too great, so we do manage to get ourselves away. Once again, we make an escape with no food, barely any health, by the skin of our teeth, but we do get it done. We're making away with nearly 600k in spoils. Always a nice drop to look at on the ground, I think. The Draconic Plate Legs. Round two, fight. Bye. Just before we get into the goals list, if you are enjoying the series, consider subscribing, click the bell icon and you'll be notified as soon as I upload. And if you'd be kind enough to like, I'd really appreciate it as it does help my video be seen.
And here is how our goals are looking guys, if you wish to pause and take a little look at it, please do feel free. I added the wards into different shards, is it somebody, something that somebody requested. I had loads of fun being back on World Nate, I hope you guys are happy to see him back. I thought it was a really cool episode, I've really enjoyed making it, I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. And until next time guys, thank you very much for watching as always, and goodbye.